Hello, my name is Sam Kriegman, and on behalf of my co-authors, I'll be presenting our 2021 RSS paper on scale invariant robot behavior with fractals. This is a picture of a fractal robot design shown at two size scales. On the left, three small basal robots are pictured in a staggered formation. On the right, 18 of these identical basal robots were combined fractally to form the same shape at a larger size scale. We would like to know not only for this robot, but if there exists any robot designs that, when composed fractally, exhibit similar behavior at different scales, because this would greatly expand the environments in which those robots could operate. There are, in fact, many candidate robot designs that work quite well by themselves. For example, this basal robot is composed of blue and red material that actuates volumetrically in antiphase. This particular design results in locomotion, specifically rolling. However, when this robot is combined with other identical copies of itself fractally, the fractal assemblage no longer moves. In fact, most robots do not do the same thing at larger size scales when combined fractally or otherwise. There are other fractal robot designs which are functionless alone, but exhibit interesting behavior when combined, just like this design. But there are some robot designs that behave similarly at multiple fractal scales. This robot locomotes at all three fractal scales we tested spanning two orders of magnitude. So how do you find these good but rare fractal designs? We used an evolutionary algorithm. The vertical axis of this plot tracks fitness normalized for scale, the locomotion speed of the robot in terms of body lengths per minute. The horizontal axis denotes the generation of evolution, starting from a population of randomly generated designs at generation zero, and then replacing the worst designs at each generation with randomly modified copies of the better ones for 325 generations. Over time, the performance of the designs on average increases across all three scales, which can be seen by the rising blue, orange, and green curves, which denote the basal, middle, and largest fractal scales we tested respectively. At the end of each evolutionary trial, we have a winning design, such as this one, which can locomote at the basal fractal scale, as well as the middle and largest scales. A diversity of winning designs with scale and variant behavior were discovered across the independent evolutionary trials. Okay, but at this point you might be wondering, why fractals? Well, when the fractal assumption is dropped, another method must be found to combine robots at each scale. It turns out that, under the tested conditions, it was much more difficult to achieve scale invariant robot behavior without assuming self-similar structure. This can be seen by the fact that the three non-fractal curves on the right are much lower in fitness than the three fractal curves on the left. For more details about this control experiment, please see the results section 3A in the paper. But all of those results were in simulation. We also want to understand the particular challenges and opportunities of designing and manufacturing physical fractal robots, so we transferred this design from sim to real. This is the best fractal robot design found by evolution when the design space was limited to a single actuator, meaning the entire robot acts as one bladder and all basal modules actuate in phase with each other. This pneumatically controlled fractal robot design behaves similarly at two size scales but they move differently than their simulated equivalents. Also, as the number of basal robots increases, the volume of air required to attain a given pressure level also increases, which makes pressurizing a larger fractal robot at high frequency very challenging. We also explored the possibility of fractal Biobots. These biobots or xenobots are composed entirely of frog skin cells and use cilia on their surface to swim through fresh water. They are by default motile spheroids composed of cells which are themselves motile spheroids, so they are by default fractals. However, there would be a size limit for any spheroid xenobot or any other shape of biological tissue without a vascular system because diffusion does not bring sufficient oxygen beyond approximately one millimeter. So, as proof of principle, we show that xenobots can be mechanically joined, forming large branching structures that do not need vascular systems because they always keep their cells close to an interface with nutrient-rich medium. For more information about fractal robots, and biobots, and simulated fractals, please download our paper from fractalrobots.github.io, and thank you for listening to this very short, rushed presentation.